I love the Lord because he had heard my voice and my supplications, because he had inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserved the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. This psalm is uh, messianic without a shadow of doubt, but due to unbelief and due to a so-called Alexandrian cult, constantly messing with words like Sheol and Hades, we are told that today not many scholars hold to the messianic applications of verses 1-3 to and 8-17. to Naturally, the apostates attribute this rejection to new light on the original Hebrew. The problem is an unbelief in Christ's humanity. Devotionally, we may observe that God loves us without a good reason, verse 1, and we loved him only because he first loved us, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. Verse 2, if it worked once, it will work again. He had inclined his ear unto me. Prayer is the most scientific method on earth used for inductive proof. Any man can find out if God exists by calling on his name for wisdom and truth. Christ said it would be revealed to him. John chapter 7 verse 17. Prayer is a lifelong occupation and there is no time in life when it's not needed and not helpful. Verse 3. The sorrows of death begin to encompass a man before he dies, sometimes many years before he dies. Hell begins to take hold of a sinner before he dies. Hell can get a hold on you before you get there. As Christ in you is the hope of glory, Galatians chapter 1 verse 27, so Satan in the unsaved man is his hope of damnation. It's this foretaste of damnation divine. This explains why self-righteous sinner think your heaven or your hell is just here on earth. As Dwight Moody wisely said, this earth is all of heaven that an unsaved man will ever see, and this earth is all of hell that a saved man will ever see. The Lord's salvation is revealed in order between verses 5 and 7. The Lord is gracious, verse 5, indicating that he gives sinners a chance to be saved. Secondly, the Lord is righteous, verse 5, indicating that he demands righteousness for salvation. Third, the Lord is merciful, verse 5, indicating that he has relieved you of the burden and will become your righteousness for you in your stead. Fourth, the Lord preserves the saved sinner, verse 6. Six, the Lord helps the sinner with his word, verse 6. And seventh, the Lord often blesses the saved sinner materially as well. Verse 7. In verse 8, the soul has been delivered from eternal death in hell. The body has been saved from the sorrow of reaping a sinful life. And the man's spirit has been guided to save him from falling into more sins or into a disaster. Doctrinally speaking, verse 3 is a reference to Jesus Christ as found in Acts chapter 2, verse 27 and 30, 31 and Psalm chapter 16, verse 10. It's the pains, pains of hell that shake up the apostate conservatives and fundamentalists as usual. In Psalm 8, chapter 18, verse 5, we find a counterpart. One Bible commentator and writer Spurgeon is careful to tell you that what the psalmist meant that he didn't say was that the pains of hell were really just the pangs that belong to death, those terrors which are connected with the grave. Well, thank you. Pastor Russell and Judge Rutherford, Herbert W. Armstrong, couldn't have said it any, any better. The sorrows of death were the pangs and terrors of the grave in the verse. 
and they were a separate item from the pains of hell. The word translated hell is usually taken in the Old Testament for the grave. It is, whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, into the nether parts of the earth. Her graves are round about him, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. Ezekiel chapter 32 verses 20 to 29. Shall burn under the lowest hell. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 22. What would you mean with lowest grave, if you think about that way? Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, Isaiah chapter 5 verse 14. The grave is getting bigger, is it? Out of the belly of hell cried I, Jonah chapter 2 verse 2. Jonah was in a grave, was he? Well, we can say that uh, Jesus Christ now has the keys of death and hell. On his girdle, Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. He got them by going through death and hell. Thus our text says, death and hell, verse 3. Got it. His body didn't see corruption at death, Acts chapter 2 verse 27. And his soul wasn't left in hell, Acts chapter 2 verse 31. Death and hell both have gates. Job chapter 38 verse 17, Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. So he got the keys, Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, to go through the gates. He suffered the sorrows of death in Gethsemane. Then he suffered the pains of hell, as in pains on the cross. They were given as plural because with, with the heat, see Exodus chapter 12 verse 8, and the torment, see Luke chapter 16 verse 24, came desertan, desertan by God, see Job chapter 30, verse 20, Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, and the oppressive reality of sin, see Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, as real as the devil knows, knows it to be, see Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Verse 4 is one of those pre-crucifixion prayers we mentioned under Psalm chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, chapter 22, verse 5, chapter 20, and uh, verse chapter 27, verse 12, etc. Verses 6 and 7 and 8 follow the resurrection. See Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. Uh, devotionally again, all kinds of things can be said. I called verse 4, I'm calling now. Verse 13, I will call in the future, verse 2. I will call as long as I live, verse 2. God did deliver my soul when I called the name of the Lord, verse 4. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. And he did help me when I was brought low, verse 6. My soul can now return to its original home. For God made my soul, Isaiah chapter 57, verse 16. When he saved me, he did four things for me. Firstly, he saved my soul from hell, and I don't mean shell, and I don't mean the grave, and I don't mean something sizing my mind, like a Christian scientist. Verse 8. Secondly, he saved me from all the tears I would have shed if I had gone on in the way of death, Romans chapter 6, verses 18 to 23, that I was traveling, James chapter 5, verse 20, verse 8. He changed the direction of my feet, so they began to walk in the right direction, Job chapter 8, verse 13, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 20. My feet can now walk before the Lord and walk in the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, and chapter 2, verse 6. I could fall if I lost my feet, but I have more than my feet now to stand on. I have his feet. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 13 and 21. Notice how Psalm chapter 30, verses 11 to 12 matches this verse spiritually. If you want an illustration of nature about the conversion of my feet, they formerly were swift to shed blood, Romans chapter 3, verse 15. So I was always in slippery places. Psalm 
chapter 35 verse 6 and chapter 73 verse 18. Now I have hints for it. 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 34 and don't have to worry about falling. See Hebrews, see Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19. Verse 9 can be applied three ways. First of all, the psalmist has assurance that his prayer will be answered so amid threats of immediate death he knows he is not going to die. Secondly, the Lord Jesus Christ is re reassuring himself of the promise of Titus chapter 1 verse, verses 1 to 2, which the Father gave him before Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, and so look forward to returning to the earth's surface after descending into the heart of the earth. Matthew chapter 20 verse 40. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 8 to 10. And I don't mean shell or graves. The low, lower parts of the earth is not a reference to the grave or graves. It's a reference to the lower parts of the earth. In the heart of the earth, dirty devotionally any saved sinner will walk before the Lord, both now and in the millennium. The land of the living here as elsewhere in scripture is this earthly life compared with the life of the dead who no longer are among the living. See Job chapter 28 verse 13 in particular and chapter 33 verse 30. Also Psalm chapter 27 verse 13 and chapter 52 verse 5 and Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 2. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen.